Good afternoon, morning, evening, fellow privateers. <clears throat> Hope everyone had a nice weekend in quarantine, lockdown. It's, it's getting a bit old. At least the sun is shining here. Get out of the house, do a few things, spring cleaning, that sort of thing. Anyhow, <clears throat> let's get right down to it. I think the open uh, today is going to be somewhat interesting. I'm getting this out three hours. It's recording this three hours before the equity index open. And from the looks of it, um, I tweeted this out earlier. Um, weekend Wall Street, we're actually up. We were kind of down a little bit most of yesterday. Pretty much unchanged when I got up this morning. And then it's been... Um, drifting higher. I think it's just on some of the positive news flow that we've seen out of the weekend. Uh, Italy reported its lowest daily deaths since the 19th of March. New York's daily death toll fell for the first time today. You know, that's the epicenter, obviously, in the U.S. <clears throat> um, Gilead is talking about donating uh, the experimental drug um, Remdesivir, I believe it's called, one that's gotten some early, um, has had some, some good um, results when it comes to treating the virus. And, you know, Trump's been on every day. I'm sure he's got a presser in a couple hours as well. He'll, he usually gets on before the market opens. Um, so anyhow, so on balance, I'd say, you know, things are looking a little bit more upbeat. Um, I get this strange feeling that um, stocks might open, trade higher, and be limit up today. So I'm going on record, and I will tweet that for anyone else. Um, so let's get down to the charts. Here's a weekly dollar index. We started this. Um, we started out with this chart last week in the week ahead outlook. So we had the huge, two huge up weeks, approach that old high, this horizontal right here is massively important. Then we got the big down week, and then this past week we went right back up. Folks, this is one of the most terrifying charts, and I'll show you why. We cannot break these old highs from... Uh, late 16, early 17. Um, you know, the world is already in a lot of pain and the last thing it needs is a strong dollar. And uh, I'll show you a few examples of why. The market is massively short dollars. You know, emerging markets, they borrow in dollars. They're short and you get charts like this, dollar max from 1850 up to 25 closed on the highs of the week i was short lost some money on that on friday we can't break these levels you know dollar turkey is approaching its all-time highs from back in 18. dollar rand is making new all-time highs another parabolic chart so clearly the biggest impact this strong dollar will have is on emerging markets and you're seeing that in these currency prices um, if we do break i'm not saying that that's my base case uh, but if the dollar index does break this 103 you know 10360 call it 104 we're gonna go i gotta go to a monthly actually I gotta go to a yearly um Check out the yearly. I know we're, we're tactical traders, but I do like looking at, you know, when I see things that are moving, I like to look at all time. So this is, um, I guess this must have been, you know, when the, when the um, plaza accord and I don't know, I guess when the DXY was created. Using TradingView here, I'd have to look at Bloomberg to get more accurate data. We'd have to use, we'd probably use dollar versus Deutschmark, which was the, you know, pre-euro 
the, the major and is the major, you know, the euro is a major component of the dollar index. So anyhow, we don't want to see this break. If this breaks, the shit's going to hit the fan and I could easily see, you know, a 10, 15, 20% rally. Um, think of euro at 80. Think of dollar yen at, I don't know, 150, 200. I've seen those prices before. We could see them again in a hurry. Now, having said that, <clears throat> everyone's watching these, this dollar very closely. You know, they've been doing, you know, the, the swap lines, which has helped normalize um, things a bit, but it's not working in the emerging markets, clearly, as you saw in the Max and Rand and, and Turkey charts and Brazil looks even worse and Argentina even worse. Um, but I think that this would lead to a Plaza Accord 2.0 and that would be really be the only way to stop the dollar's ascent. So keep an eye. I'm not saying this is going to happen in the next couple of weeks or even the next couple of months, but if we do see a, you know, blow off type move, parabolic type move higher in the dollar, the authorities will get involved and there will be another plaza accord. And then you'll see a, a swift, you know, 10 to 20% drop in the dollar. You know, go back to the history books and see what, how other asset classes performed during the plaza accord. I don't have time to go over that today, but it'll be interesting reading for sure. Um, so that's a dollar that, you know, the Euro, that's a dollar index Euro chart looks similar. If you want to look and see where we have, um, we are, we got pretty close to some support, um, in the Euro, if we pull up the FIBO, we got close to that three quarter FIB, which I believe is 107.60. Let me just double check that. I just drew all these on my other charting package. Yeah. So I call it 107.50.60. Um, we got very close. We had a little bit of a rally in the euro late in the day. Um, and stocks bounced off their lows. And that was on something to do with the banks not requiring to um, hold back on their dividend payments in the U.S. So stocks shot up about 30, 40, 50 handles even, I think, late in the day. Um, so anyhow, the, you know, we are, we are getting very close to support in Euro, short-term support. Um, let's go to equities. Um, speaking of here, we'll look at the E-mini, you know, we are closed right now, so I can get, um, it was trading heavy really all afternoon. And then the dividend news came out and we closed around 2482. So we had bounced, uh, I think we'd gotten down to 48. The futures. This is the the low here that I'm watching though. 2420. I think it was 2425. So a break of that, or I would even call it like in the short term, like tonight, if we can get above Friday's highs, then I think we'll go up and test these highs at 26, 30, 40 again. Um, you know, this looks like a pretty decent break trade, but I'd like to be long well before that. And, uh, I think I'm going to just buy some on the open and I'll leave a stop below um, Friday, Thursday and Friday's lows. So that's S&P, uh, NASDAQ, similar, you know, had a, had a late day rally. Uh, in, did have the inside day? Pretty close. We got a little, you know, two highs here at 76.50. So 76.50 on the top side or 73.70 on the downside. Um, those are my, my two short-term levels. Uh, gold had a um, small positive day, closed kind of mid-range, you know, had a decent uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday levels there, 1645. We break through there, and then I think we go up to these highs, and I'd be watching this low here around 1560. Um, silver looks very similar. Um, WTI, let's get down to oil. Oil had a massive move. 
Here's our oil. So you can see, got down below 20 bucks, went down to 1920, and then we rallied up to just shy of 30 bucks. And uh, the news out, it, they postponed this OPEC talk, I think, till Thursday. Um, I thought I wrote it down somewhere. I'm pretty sure they said Thursday. So, and then there's some tariff talk, potentially tar uh, tariffs on oil imports um, from the Middle East. So, the open and oil could be messy. So you could actually see kind of a buy S&Ps, sell oil type pair trade um, on the open. That'll be that'll be interesting to see. Uh, but I, I do expect oil to come under a bit of pressure. Um, although they are they are planning on chatting, it sounds like they might end up doing something in cut production. Saudi Arabia has to. Otherwise, they'll be blowing through their 500 billion in, in reserves. Um, so they're going to have to do something, and they're they're going to be forced into it. I think they want U.S. Um, shale producers to also cut. Um, so it would be kind of a global effort, um, which makes a lot of sense. We also have a meeting on Monday. Uh, I think it's on Monday. It's a Eurozone um, is it finance ministers or Eurozone. Um, it's a Eurozone group meeting. Um, I believe it's on Monday. And my guess is that they're, they will start talking more about these Corona bonds out of Europe, which would be really, really bullish, the Euro. Um, so let's see how that goes. Pay, pay attention to the headlines that will be coming out of Europe. Um, like I said, I believe it's Monday. I can't seem to find the article that I was reading. Um, so that's, yeah, so that's for the Euro. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on in Aussie. You know, just kind of following the dollar strength of last week. Um, I wonder if this just goes into like some sort of mean reversion type, um, you know, lower volatility in currencies, at least for the next week or two. Um, and then just kind of, you know, just retraces the recent moves. So, you know, you had the big up move in Aussie and then it rolled over last week. And, you know, maybe this week we come back up. Um, so let's take a look at dollar yen. Dollar yen's kind of a mess. We know the huge level up here where all the selling was 111.70. And then these same guys that I think sold up there have been buying 107. There have been huge bids, 107, 107.50, and they've been filled in. And you can see we closed up at 108.38 right near the, you know, not too far from the highs of the day. And, uh, and the highs of the week, which were, 108.72. So, you know, if you start, if equities are doing well, I suspect that uh, the yen will weaken. You know, maybe a maybe a good trade would be the old the old Aussie yen trade. Let's see here. Does that look like on daily? Yeah, it hasn't been doing much. I mean, you look at some of these. You know, we have all these wicks, and then you get these closes that just did nothing here over these four days. And we had a slightly lower close, and we had a big down day. And then, you know, the ranges are a little bit tighter. We had an inside bar here on uh, Friday. So my guess is you could buy it through 65.60 or sell it through the low of Friday, 64.80. And you might be able to get, um, you know, a decent, uh, a decent directional move out of that. All right, we're coming up on the 15-minute mark. I want to get this out, get outside in the sun before the open. Um, good luck this week. Stay safe. I hope everyone's healthy. A lockdown seems to be working. Um, 
think we'll probably, you know, in the Midwest here, we're probably not going to see a peak for another couple of weeks. So everything will continue to be shut down. But um, the, you know, the trends are starting to turn a bit and that's good news. And it's going to make, you know, it's particularly good for New York City where it's just been a tragedy. But uh, I think you'll start seeing some, some trend changes in, you know, some of the other, the Midwestern cities and, and then, you know, eventually out on the West Coast, right in time for spring. So good luck and we will speak to you on the European Open. All the best.